Data scientists often work in iterative and exploratory environments. Thus, there is often a focus on rapid results rather than creating maintainable or scalable code. However, data scientists must avoid writing poor code for the following reasons. Firstly, badly written code can be difficult to read and understand, making it harder for both the original author and other team members to maintain or modify the code in the future. Secondly, poorly structured code is more prone to errors, potentially affecting the accuracy of analyses or models. Thirdly, badly written code can hinder integration with production systems and handovers to other team members. To write better code in data science projects, it's crucial to recognize and address common bad practices, which may include excessive use of Jupyter notebooks, vague variable names, redundant code, duplicated code segments, frequent use of global variables, and lack of proper code testing. These bad practices make the code less readable, reusable, and maintainable. To illustrate these issues, we will examine the How I Made Top 03% on a Kaggle Competition Notebook. I selected this notebook because it showcases coding practices that mirror common mistakes observed in the code of data scientists I've collaborated with. By examining this notebook, we can gain valuable insights into the pitfalls to avoid as data scientists. One common bad practice in data science is the excessive use of Jupyter Notebooks. Don't get me wrong, I like Jupyter Notebooks. It offers an interactive environment for code execution, visualization, and immediate feedback, making it valuable for exploratory analysis and proof of concept. However, it is not ideal for data scientists to use Jupyter Notebooks for production-related tasks like feature engineering and model training for several reasons. Firstly, altering the execution order of dependent cells can introduce errors. In this example, executing the lock transformation cell before the dropping outlier cell results in the removal of two outliers. However, executing the dropping outlier cell before the lock transformation cell results in the removal of three outliers. Furthermore, notebooks frequently contain a combination of visualization and analysis code as well as production code. This blend of code in a single notebook can lead to resource-intensive tasks that may negatively impact the performance of the production system. To optimize the workflow, use notebooks for analysis while using Python scripts for feature engineering and machine learning model training. To further organize your project, create a notebook for data analysis before feature engineering and another notebook to analyze intermediate data after feature engineering. For example, we can start with visualizing the raw train data in the preprocessing notebook and then visualize the log transform data in the post-processing notebook to make sure that the data has been transformed correctly. This approach enables the use of Python scripts in various projects while maintaining a clean and organized notebook. Another common bad practice in data science is the use of vague variable names. In the following code snippet, the meanings of the variables res, ls, l, and m are unclear, making it difficult for reviewers to understand the code's logic. To enhance code readability, use descriptive and meaningful variable names that convey the purpose and contents of the variables. For example, the first res could be replaced with data, ls could be replaced with columns, l could be replaced with column, and m could be replaced with num columns. To enhance the code further, we can assign this expression to a variable called transform column. The code is now easier to understand compared to the previous version. Redundant code is another common issue in data science that can have various negative effects. First, redundant code can make the code less readable. To demonstrate this, let's look at the year soul column. Initially, the year soul column is represented as an integer. Subsequently, the code converts the year soul column to a string. Then, the year soul column is temporarily transformed to an integer. Finally, 
With one hot encoding, the year sold column is converted back to an integer. These unnecessary conversions can make it difficult for authors and maintainers to keep track of the data type of a column, which can result in the incorrect usage of the column. Additionally, redundant code can also impact performance by introducing unnecessary computational overhead. In the provided code, the author unnecessarily uses Pandas data frame twice to create two copies of a data frame. However, creating copies of the data frame is unnecessary as the objective is solely to retrieve the column names. If the original data frame is large, creating unnecessary copies can lead to excessive memory usage. To avoid issues that come with redundant code, keep your code short and to the point. Remove unnecessary lines of code that don't add value to your program. For example, we can rewrite this code to directly obtain the columns from the original data frame. Another common issue in a data science project is the presence of duplicated code segments. For example, in this cell, this expression is reused multiple times. Any modifications or updates, such as changing it to 1 if x less than 0, would require making the same change in every instance of the duplicated code. This process can be both time-consuming and error-prone. To prevent duplicated code, encapsulate repetitive code in functions or classes. For example, we can create a function called isPositive that encapsulates the expression. This approach promotes code reuse and enhances the maintainability of the overall codebase. Frequent use of global variables is another commonly seen problem in data science projects. The usage of global variables can lead to confusion and difficulties in understanding how and where the values are modified. In the following code, x, train labels, and kf are global variables that are defined in different parts of the codebase. When looking at the function call, maintainers may incorrectly assume that the CVRMC function can be invoked with only the model variable defined, but in reality, the function requires x, train labels, and kf to be defined as well. Instead of using global variables, pass x, train labels, and kf as arguments to the function. This will make the function more modular and easier to test. Data science code is also often lack of proper code testing. Untested code can yield unexpected results, even if the output seems correct. In the code example, applying this code to columns of integer types should turn them into zeros and ones. The output appears correct with zeros and ones, but it's actually wrong. In the current implementation, non-zero values become zero and zero values become one. The desired behavior should be that non-zero values become 1, while zero values become 0. Relying on inaccurate outcomes like this can result in faulty analyses and misleading conclusions. With unit tests, we can define the expected output for specific scenarios. By looking at the test results, we can minimize the chances of overlooking errors in the code. Without testing, it is also common for edge cases to be ignored. For example, this code fills missing values in the MS zoning column based on the mode of values for each group in the MS subclass column. When MS subclass has no missing values, it works as expected. However, when MS subclass contains missing values, the value error is raised. Neglecting to address edge cases can lead to problems in real-world applications. To ensure that our code adequately handles edge cases, it is essential to develop unit tests to assess these scenarios. To create a unit test for the code, begin by replacing hard-coded values with variables and passing these variables as arguments to the function. Next, construct a unit test that includes an edge case where the group column consists of missing values. The test checks if the imputed data frame contains no null values. Running this test shows that the imputed column contains two missing values. By carefully examining the errors, we can identify the necessary adjustments required in the code to handle these issues. Here, if the group column contains any missing values, we will raise a value error with a clear message. In the unit test, 
we will verify whether the value error is appropriately raised when the group column contains missing values. Rerunning the unit test reveals that the test was successful. Watch this next video for a more comprehensive guide on how to structure a data science project to enhance readability and maintainability. Thanks for watching.